I study judgment and decision making, how all of us in our personal and professional lives take in information uh, from the world around us and try to do the difficult task of figuring out what to think and how to act in our complex world and have a particular interest in uh, some of the systematic mistakes we make in evaluating evidence, how we can uh, arrive at erroneous conclusions and sometimes embark on uh, problematic or even disastrous courses of action. One of the reasons I like studying judgment and decision making is that we all make judgments decisions all the time and so I can study uh, decision making in relationships, political decision making, sports decision making, economic decision making. Um, so the variety uh, to the job is, <laughs> is a lot of fun. Uh, secondly, um, it's very rewarding to study studying judgment and decision making because um, I think they can help us think straight about all of the pressing problems the world faces, whether it's uh, climate change, growing income inequality, the possible disappearance of work as robotics and artificial intelligence gets more developed more and more people are put out of work, uh, that's a different world and we need to make very strong um, decisions about that to, that should be a good thing, we'll be richer than we've ever been and uh, we shouldn't screw that up and so far the signs aren't, uh, aren't great uh, that we're not going to screw that up. Um, so anyway, I think judgment, the study of judgment and decision making has a lot to offer for all the world problems because most of the world's problems are human problems. Yeah, uh, regret's interesting in a whole bunch of ways. Uh, one is um, you could imagine a world in which it would be hard to study because if you ask people, oh, tell me about your biggest regrets, people say, eh, I don't, I don't want to do that. Um, turns out not to be the case. Um, I'm sure there are some regrets that people hide from us, uh, but people, especially over time, really want to talk about them um, and they find some value in talking about them. So, so we learn a lot. And among the interesting things is um, when you make a mistake, um, it's often a mistake of action that hurts the most. So imagine that you're in a grocery store line and it's just the person in front of you has a million coupons and they're just taking forever and you see the line next to you, people are zipping through it, you face a decision, should I switch to that line or not? Imagine you do switch and that line slows down, the line you were in speeds up, you're gonna really kick yourself that, oh, I, I, it's a mistake of commission. You moved, you took action. You feel much worse about that than a mistake of inaction um, at first, uh, in the short term. Over time, however, turns out to be completely the opposite. The people's most common uh, regrets, long-term regrets over their life are things they didn't do. Um, I never went to college. I never learned to play a musical instrument. I should have pursued uh, this person who expressed an interest in me at a certain period of life, etc. It's the regrets of inaction that uh, loom larger. And it's kind of interesting to explore why that is, what's responsible for that temporal pattern. And what seems to be at play is precisely because the action regrets hurt more initially, you do more to deal with them. You, um, people have talked about a psychological immune system, very much like the physical immune system that protects the body. This protects our psychology. Um, we rationalize things, we think of them in a different light and become more comfortable with them. Um, and one of the ways that we justify actions is to say, yeah, that's a problem, but here's a silver lining. Yes, I married the wrong person, but I wouldn't have these great kids if I hadn't done that. Um, it's harder to identify silver linings from inaction. Um, that is, uh, I didn't do anything new, but I learned a lot. Well, that almost doesn't make sense. There are times where it certainly could be the case, but those, uh, those are rare. Um, so there's a whole bunch of things uh, that conspire to make your inaction regrets longer lived, and so those are the ones you end up with uh, later in life. The most surprising result on the regret research was that um, people in independent cultures like the United States where individuals uh, striving, self-actualization is a powerful norm, it's something a person is supposed to do, it makes sense that 
regrets of inaction would loom large. I didn't become the person I could have become. In cultures that stress community, duties, and obligations, you could have imagined, in fact, we did imagine, uh, that regrets of inaction, you did things that hurt other people, you violated certain norms, those would loom larger. So we predicted that people in China and Japan, for example, would have a higher proportion of regrets of action than people in the United States. So we explored that, didn't find it at all, complete uh, surprise. Um, the, we completed a recent project that uh, wasn't about regret per se, but relates to the regret research. It's something we call sudden death aversion. And it's easiest to explain either to a gambler or to a sports fan. So the sports example is your favorite team is trailing by, favorite football team is trailing by seven points at the end of the game. You've got the ball, you're able to march down the field and score with just seconds to go. Uh, you were trailing by seven points, now you're trailing by one. And you have a decision to make. Do you kick the extra point and try to win the game in overtime? Or do you go for two right then and there to settle it then and there? Uh, almost no one uh, goes for two. They all kick the extra point and we're able to show that they'd be better off slightly if they kick the extra point. You win more often if you do that than if you go into overtime. Uh, but people don't want to do that. They don't want to take the risk of the immediate loss. They'll rather kick it off into the future. Uh, so they do so. They avoid the regret of that instant loss. They avoid being killed on social media by Monday, Monday morning quarterbacks. Um, and uh, the result is they shortchange themselves. They, they win fewer games. Um, I think recognizing the temporal pattern to the experience of regret uh, is very helpful. In fact, for decision making in general, um, getting the, um, the broadest perspective on it is usually quite helpful. It, ma it makes it easier to make a decision. It also often makes it easier to make a better decision. So in addition to just assessing how you think and feel about it right now, what advice would you give to a friend? That's a different perspective. How am I going to think about this um, 30 years down the road? That's a different perspective. Once we do that, we take in these varied uh, perspectives, uh, we're going to come at it from more angles. It's a little bit like the wisdom of the crowd. The, the crowd's in our own head in this case, but uh, we're getting different perspectives and, and some greater wisdom as a result.